Welcome to the VoiceOver Sermon with Terry Daniel, the podcast for voiceover artists with tons of handy tips, tricks, and useful information to help you run your voiceover business better. And now, here's your host, Terry Daniel. Good afternoon, everybody. Terry Daniel, voice actor and coach from Minneapolis. I would like to spew out all of my political beliefs. Give me about three hours. All right, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't hit the stop button. I promise this isn't what this episode is about. But I do want to talk about politics and voiceover. I did an episode similar to this probably a couple of years ago. Knowing the way my brain works, maybe it was last week and I already forgot. Who knows? We're obviously in a very heated political season. So what I want to talk about is what the right decision is when it comes to getting a political gig, whether it's an audition or perhaps the client found your website. Maybe this is an agency gig. Maybe this is going to come by way of your talent agent. And at first, you may get a little excited about it. Like, wow, man, I got a gig. Seriously, I'm in my 30th year. It's still fun when you get that email that somebody wants to hire you. That never, ever goes away. You might be thinking, Terry, why are you getting so excited about a gig? You sound like a newbie. No, you never take any gig for granted because you never, it might be your last one ever. We hope not, of course. I don't think it will be for yours truly, but let's talk about this. You're excited about the gig. And then you open the script. (laughs) Hard partisan attacks. Smear campaigns. This is the kind of copy that after you read it, you feel like you have to take a hot shower. You're like, oh my God, this is just disgusting. I'm not reading this. I'm not going to, I don't want my name to be on this type of content. Years and years ago, I would take any type of project. It was all about the money. You know what? The money's good. I'm going to do it. But then I got bit in the ass. A longtime client heard me on a political ad, which was no matter which side of the aisle you swing from politically was relatively offensive. This was many, many years ago. He was so insulted by the content. He took it really personally and told me he didn't really want to work with me anymore. That was when I kind of took a few steps back and went, well, you know, the money was really good for for doing this gig, but I just lost another client because I decided to work with this particular political client. Now, eight months later, we did repair our working relationship. So it, it does have a happy ending, but it was enough of a red flag where I was kind of going, well, you know, do I really want to be doing political commercials and have my name out there on this kind of content, there's really, you know, to be honest, there isn't a right or wrong answer here. It's all about your passions. If you are driven by your own political affiliation and policies, if you're passionate about those things, well, you know what? You should do them then. But I'm not sure, you know, again, in the past, I'm like, well, I'll take money from either party. It's business is business. But honestly, we're kind of living in an era where, and this is my opinion, you know, it's everybody's entitled to their own opinion, especially when it comes to a very sensitive topic such as politics. But in my opinion, I don't really want to do VO work for the other side. And I'm not going to go into my personal political opinions or whether I'm conservative, liberal, this, that, this, that. That's not what this podcast episode is all about. And I don't want anybody unsubscribing to my podcast, (laughs) but I just decided, I'm like, you know what? I never really slept at night knowing that I was kind of a, it it felt a little slimy doing, you know, political ads for both parties. I mean, I don't know it. uh, Like I said, I, when I did a couple of them for the opposing party, they were relatively mild. You know, it wasn't like this huge attack ad where you're just completely grossed out by the time the project is over. You know, they were they were relatively, I guess, moderate would be the word that I would use. But still, you know, I would just lie in bed and stare at the ceiling. And I'm like, why am I, 
why am I helping this particular political affiliation that I'm not involved with? And it just never really felt great. So my own business practices, I decided that I was only going to do political spots that support my own political affiliation, my own beliefs, my own passions. Uh, I'm not going to cross over to the other side just for a buck or two. I'm just not going to do it anymore. All that said, I'm still taking a chance because if I decide to do a couple of political spots for my own political affiliation, there's still a chance that a future prospective client might hear me on this political ad and not agree with the content. But I still stand by my original guideline is that I really don't want to do a really hardcore attack ad smear campaign because I don't care which side of the aisle you're supporting in this particular ad. I don't want my voice attached to that. I mean, I'm already taking a little bit of a chance. I have a really big mouth on Twitter. That's kind of where I get my uh, where I release my political anguish. <laughs> Some of you already know that, and I know it gets to be a little over the top. It gets to be a little extreme sometimes. I guess it's kind of my chosen platform to just throw anything that's on my mind out there, because my, my Twitter account, honestly, is just really more about me. It's not just a 100% voiceover guru Twitter account. I like to throw out some tips, yes, but it's really... More Terry Daniel than Terry Daniel, the voice actor. If you want just Terry Daniel, the voice actor, then you can join my voiceover camp Facebook group on the Mighty Mighty Facebook. Um, if you're not in our group, why the hell not? Where have you been? This group's been around for 15 years. It's a good group, if you're, especially if you're brand new at voiceover. In fact, you can find it, if I can look it up here as I'm doing this podcast, it's facebook.com slash groups slash voiceover camp, all one. In other words, it's not voice dash over dash camp. Facebook.com slash groups slash voiceover camp. Find us, know us, love us. We have great conversations. Uh, it's also a good place to be if you're interested in coaching with us. I will usually make some announcements there when the next class is or when we're taking on new talents. So check that out. I'm dancing around here a little bit. Terry ADHD Daniel is all over the place as usual. But, you know, isn't that the charm of this podcast? So anyway, back to the political stuff. This is, and some of you might think, well, you're not being very helpful because sometimes I don't know what the hell to do. This really needs to be a decision that every voice talent needs to make for themselves. And I know that's not really, you know, the ultimate wisdom, but it's a tough one. Because political stuff is such a hot button, especially on social media. My God, you speak your mind and you get lambasted, no matter which party you're with. You know, it can be a very hostile environment, very polarized world out there. So it's, again, you have to ask yourself, do I want my name and my voice on that particular piece of content? And the second question is, is it going to hurt future business? Because if my name and my voice is on this particular ad, how many other people is the ad going to piss off? <laughs> Wait a minute, weren't you on that attack ad where, oh God, I don't want to work with you. I mean, most clients are pretty cool about it. And how many of them are really going to know that that's your voice on that particular political ad? But if it's a big, like a regional national spot... You know, uh, hey, your voice sounds familiar. Oh, wait a minute. You were the guy ripping on what's his name or what's her name in that political attack ad. You know what? I don't think I want to work with you, buddy. <laughs> you know, what are the chances of that happening? Obviously, it happened to me once. You know, going back to the story that I revealed earlier in this particular podcast. Again, it had a happy ending because we you know, repaired the working relationship later on. But it was enough to make me stop and think. It's like, well, maybe I don't want to be doing political ads at all. And that, honestly, is a decision that should be respected by anybody in the community and any client that's making an inquiry, whether it's via your website or through your talent agent. You have the right to stand up and say, you know what? I'm not doing any of this political garbage. Not interested. I'll stick with the commercials, e-learning, theme park announcements, whatever. I'm not going to have 
my name attached to such drivel. Now, there are talents where that's all they do is political ads. They're known for being the political voice of a certain candidate or a certain party, and they don't do other voiceover jobs. You know, it's kind of like somebody who's an audiobook narrator. Maybe that's their niche and that's all they're going to do. They don't want to have anything to do with any other genres, you know? Um, so you do have talents like that. But again, what is the right decision? Is there one? This podcast is really more to just raise awareness to the topic. Like, oh my God, what am I supposed to do here? Am I supposed to turn down this money because the content is something that I don't agree with? You're going to have to make that business decision yourself. That's going to do it today. I'm going to kind of leave this one hanging. Maybe we'll come back to it at some point before the election or a little bit later on. But I thought it was an important topic to bring up since this is, you know, a very heated election year. So good luck, everybody. My name's Terry Daniel, voice actor and coach from Minneapolis. Thank you for tuning in to VoiceOver Sermons, which, by the way, if you're not already listening on Apple Podcasts, you can go on there and look for VoiceOver Sermons by Terry Daniel. You know what's weird about the search page for Apple Podcasts? If, if you type in like VoiceOver, VoiceOvers, there's podcasts that come up by voice talents who aren't even in the business anymore. And the last episode they recorded was like seven years ago. Why are they coming up before my podcast? Somebody tell me that. Somebody write me and tell me why. Because voiceover sermons deserves to be on the top row of a search. Honestly, some of these, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not going to mention the names of the talents, but a couple of them aren't even voice actors anymore. And yet there their podcast is when I type in voiceover. I'm sure the algorithm's different from wherever, wherever you're typing in, but I just thought that was relatively bizarre. But uh, anyway, you can subscribe via Apple Podcasts. You can also hear us on iHeartRadio and also Spotify. Or you could just go to the Spreaker site, which you can just type in voiceoversermons.com to get there. I do appreciate you listening, and I will talk to everybody soon. Have a great week. Thank you for tuning in to The Voice Over Sermon with Terry Daniel. See you next time for more useful tips and tricks to help make your voiceover business run better.